I've always believed that geometry nodes is gonna be the next step in architectural modeling for Blender. So when I saw this procedural building node setup on Twitter, I had to check it out. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this particular tool comes from Julian Gauthier. And I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. Um, you can see more about it on his Twitter page or by going to his Gumroad page right here. But basically what this is, is this is a tool designed to help you quickly generate buildings using simple meshes from Blender. So if you jump over to his Gumroad page right here, you can download this uh, geometry node tool set right here. So note that this does have a little bit higher price. So you do need to pay 30 Canadian dollars or more in order to get it. But it's also a pretty robust tool set. Like when you buy it, not only do you get access to the actual tool itself, there's also like a documentation that kind of shows you how everything works, other things like that. So it is like a real tool for creating buildings in Blender, not just a little toy. And so there's six different styles of buildings included with this tool. So there's some more information in here as well about um, um, some of the different things that are included. But for now, let's jump over into Blender and take a look at how it works. All right, and so this is actually a really interesting tool because basically what it does is it uh, distributes different objects on simple meshes based on the materials that are applied to them. So it's actually using materials to tell this where different things are going to go. So for example, let's say that we were to select this building right here. I'm gonna toggle this off. Notice how this is basically just a simple rectangular shape in here with materials applied to it. If we were to look at our material properties right here, notice how these are all in here with different names. And so when you apply those different names to your objects, what it's gonna do is it's gonna use the geometry nodes to actually place objects from collections on top of the object. So if I toggle my geometry node back on, notice how we basically got this building in here and it's applying different things based on the materials that were in here. And so what's cool about this is you can randomize the materials that are applied on here by adjusting the seed for each one of these objects. So notice how when I adjust the seed, what it's doing is it's applying different variations of the different things that are in here. So this one's a little bit subtle because it's basically changing like the grass that's on here and not really anything else. But you can use this in order to not only set the number of windows that are on here, but also how often they're distributed. So if I bring this down, right, notice how on each one of these, I can actually bring down the number of windows that are in here, and you're gonna get less windows in your scene. This allows you to really quickly concept out buildings by adjusting those densities as well as the seeds that are in here. And so all of these other parts and pieces that are generated in here are procedural as well. So like for example, if we take a look at these roof supports and we adjust the stretch of those roof supports, notice how those are going to change in your scene as well. And so everything about these is procedural. So if we look at this uh, high rise tower, for example, notice how we can adjust the seed of those apartments. And basically what it's doing is it's taking these surfaces and it's applying these pre-made collections to them in order to add your detail. So let's say you wanted like less apartments in here, right? I could bring this value down right here and notice how I get less apartments on my surface. But it's basically breaking this object up into a grid and then it's applying these different apartment faces to the surface randomly. So your scene is adjusting the way that that's done right here. All right, and so let's say that we wanted to get started with this. Um, I'll kind of walk you through kind of what that generally might look like. Again, remember, because we're basically building a building using almost a grid on a building, you do need to kind of follow the rules of the actual node setup itself. But let's say that we were to open up the procedural building start file that comes with, with the download. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you this building shape right here. And if you look at this, basically what it is, if I tab into edit mode, is it's basically a series of faces like this, and it's already got the node setup applied to it. So if I jump into geometry nodes, notice how it already has the procedural building set up. One thing to note about this is it's on this really tall thing right here because it comes in with the ground extrusion set to like 20. So if you bring the ground extrusion down like this, then it makes a lot more sense. And so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import some stuff from the Japanese farmhouse blend file that it comes with. Um, we're just gonna use the presets right now so you can get an idea of the way this works. So if I go to, I just want to append. From inside that Japanese farmhouse style, I wanna import the collections. So the collections are basically the things that are gonna get applied on the surfaces like this. So now these are in your model and they're ready for you to start using. So now what that's done is that's given us the collection of different objects in here, which we can toggle off when we're not using. And it's given us some starter materials that we can work with. So 
That's given us the ID stuff. The ID stuff actually came along with the starter file. But now what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna apply a material. So right now, if we were to toggle the geometry nodes off, notice how we basically have a box with uh, very little material applied to it right now. So what we need to do is we need to do two different things. So first off, we need to set up the material inside of the geometry nodes. So that is basically going to um, set the, the shader that's applied to these different levels, right? So in this case, right, I wanna apply the shader mid-level and I want to apply a plaster old material which came in from that Japanese house model to that surface right here. That's gonna be like the base thing that's applied to anything on that mid level. So what we need to do is we need to apply a material ID to the different surfaces in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into wireframe mode, I'm gonna tab into object mode, and I'm gonna select all of these and I'm going to apply a mid levels A material. So I'm going to assign that in here. If we look at our material preview mode, nothing's really changed yet, but we've basically applied an ID material to these surfaces. Well now, in our mid-level A, which is what we just applied, we can tell this to apply something from a collection to this object. So in this case, right, if I click in here on mid wall or wood wall, what that's gonna do is that's going to apply things from the wood wall collection that we brought in right here. So in this case, we're actually going to change this and maybe do like the wood panel right here. And so remember the wood panel collection has two objects in it. So it's got this object and this object right here. And it's just randomly applying this to these surfaces. So you can adjust your seed to adjust which one of these is brought in. In this case, we wanna to toggle our stretch to on like this. That way it's gonna be randomly applying things from that collection to these surfaces and then stretching them to fit. Now, let's say that we wanted to make our house bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select this surface and I'm gonna extrude it out. This is automatically randomizing and adding things from that collection to these surfaces right here. And so you can really do this as many times as you wanna do this um, in order to make your house as complex as you want it to be. And then you can adjust that seed in order to get some randomness in here. Now let's say that I wanted some materials to be applied to the surface, right? Because right now all we've got is these panels. So let's say I wanted some windows on some of these surfaces. Well, what we could do is we could tab back into edit mode and select the surfaces where we want windows. So maybe these like the maybe like these right here, we could apply a mid-levels B to these surfaces. Well, notice how when we apply the mid-levels B, it's no longer putting anything on them because we've now changed the ID associated with them. But what we can do is we can now use the wood windows function in here in order to add windows from that wood windows group right here. And note that you do wanna make sure that you toggle that stretch on like this, so that it's making sure to stretch this across these different surfaces right here. And notice how if you tab into edit mode and you add some edge loops, this is going to split those surfaces up into individual faces like this. So when you split that geometry, what it's doing is it's giving you more faces for these objects to be applied on. So that's kind of a general idea of how the material IDs work and the different parts and pieces. There's a lot more information in the manual. You can also check out these sample files um, that come along with it in order to see how those are set up as well. But there's other things you can add like uh, support posts and other things like that. I don't wanna get super in depth on them in this video, but if you are interested in this, I will link to it down below and you can give it a try. So I'll link to some other geometry node videos on this page. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think about this node setup or about where geometry nodes in general is going. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.